What's going on guys, today we're looking at the most recent trade in the NHL where the Boston Bruins sent Ryan Donato along with a 5th round pick, the Minnesota Wild for Charlie Coyle. Now one kind of cool thing about this, I was actually just in Minnesota uh, for their NHL 19 tournament, went to a Minnesota Wild game, so uh, like what, a day I think after I was home, they made a pretty big trade here, so I'm actually going to the Red Wings game on Sunday for the NHL 19 Red Wings tournament, I'm wondering if maybe on Monday the Red Wings make a big trade, Knight Chris Howard obviously it is a trade deadline, so there's a good chance that could happen, but uh, right here we'll see kind of whether or not this trade go through in game. Uh, personally, I think it's a pretty fair trade. I think that's kind of the reaction we've seen online. Uh, there's people saying Boston won, people saying Minnesota won. I think it's pretty fair. Obviously, Donato is younger. You're not really sure what you can get from him. Could end up being better than Coyle. Also, could end up being worse. Um, as you can see here, he's a 22-year-old, 78 overall center, uh, medium toss six potential, making 900k there. I think for two or no, sorry, one more year, but he won't be very expensive at all to extend. Um, so let's see, roll there, what was that? Uh, depth forward, uh, second round pick back in 2014. Uh, quick look at all his stats there, was actually drafted by Boston. He's actually a local Boston kid too, from Boston, uh, played college at Harvard. So about as Boston as you could get. I mean, even Ryan Donato, it's like a pretty Boston name. They also said Charlie Coyle though, is also a pretty Boston name. Um, Charlie Coyle's also from Massachusetts. I think he's like a little outside the city though. So kind of like two local boys here getting traded. Um, so Boston's, you know, getting rid of one, but gaining another. And taking a look at Charlie Coyle next here, uh, kind of surprising, he's actually not even at the top of the list in terms of trade value here for Minnesota Wild. Um, it looks like he's actually 10th there. So he's 26 years old, 83 overall, uh, medium top six. He's actually making 3.2 million there. So pretty solid cap hit uh, for two more years as well. So this isn't just a rental for this year. Uh, Boston also has him for next year. Honestly, I really like kind of where he'll fit into Boston's lineup. He'll either be second line right wing with Krejci to Brusque, or they could play on third line center. Looks to have pretty similar trade value as well to Donato. So 6'3", he's a bit bigger than Donato. Uh, roll there, second line forward, exact same potential. He's actually a late first round pick by the San Jose Sharks uh, back in 2010. I didn't know that. I thought he was a uh, pick by the Minnesota Wild. I'm wondering if maybe he was part of the Brent Burns trade. Um, if not, maybe the Danny Healy trade. I'm trying to think of like when Minnesota and San Jose uh, made trades, but um, as you can see there, like I said, 3.2 million for two more years. And like I said earlier, a lot of people online feel that like Minnesota won this trade, a lot of people feel Boston won this trade. I think it's pretty equal, but I think because Coyle is still signed for next year, uh, Boston gets a slight win for me. Um, Donato obviously is a younger player, could turn out better than Coyle, but so far hasn't really proven much at the NHL level. You guys can see his stats there. Does decent in the AHL, had pretty good college numbers, but just hasn't proven in the NHL. Again, he's young though, still lots of time. Uh, Coyle, on the other hand, has proved it, has put up a 50-point season once. Uh, normally, though, he's like a 35 to 40-point guy, but at 3.2 million, that's honestly really fair. Um, Jakob Silverberg actually just signed a new contract, I wanted to mention that too. Uh, I think it was for like 5.2 million or something, and Silverberg's never even hit 50 points. Uh, in my personal opinion, you have to hit 50 points to start talking 5 million plus, as a forward at least. So, uh, I think when you kind of like compare Coyle's numbers to Silverberg, who just got 5.2 million, it's a very solid contract. And two, I think the fact that Cole can play center or wing will really help out the Bruins. Now, in terms of Minnesota getting Donato back, obviously, he's a good young forward. They were in a playoff spot. They're still fighting for that wild card spot. But if you guys look here, they really have a log jam at center. Granlin, I think, is playing wing right now. Stahl, Koivu is injured. Kunin, Eriksenek, Rask. I mean, obviously, Donato also plays center, but he can move out to the wing. And I feel like the big thing for Minnesota here is probably just trying to get a shakeup going. Obviously, trade away Nino Niederreiter for Victor Rask, who I actually met a few days ago. He's a cool guy. Uh, I got to uh, talk to him a bit. Actually, I think got a signed puck from him. Uh, I'll probably go grab that for you guys in a minute. But um, we'll see here if this trade goes through. I've talked enough. Uh, you can see Boston there, Stash Champion. They're guaranteed playoff spot right now. Minnesota Contender. They're like 50-50 wildcard team. The value is pretty equal. The trade to fleet is set to hard. If it doesn't go through on hard, we'll try it again on medium. Let's see what happens. Trade rejected. Okay, honestly though, it's very, very close. I feel like on medium or easy. This will go through. All right, guys, before we try this trade quickly on medium, I first wanted to show you the uh, signed puck I was talking about. So uh, as you can see, it's right there, Minnesota Wild logo. That's actually uh, Devin Dumnik's signature at the top, Victor Rast below him. Uh, Jordan Greenway is also there. Unfortunately, he forgot to sign the pucks. And pretty cool, too. I actually got to commentate uh, Victor Rast playing a fan. Uh, Rast destroyed him like 4 nothing. He actually got a hat trick with Victor Rast. Uh, you guys can see the pick there where, you know, I'm up there commenting with Finn. And then I also got to commentate uh, Devin Dumnik playing against Jordan Greenway. So uh, it was a lot of fun. If you guys want to see more picks from that event, uh, check out my Instagram. I'll put the link on screen there. But we're going to go back to this trade now. Medium trade difficulty. Again, it's really close. I think this has to go through. Trade is still rejected. Okay. 
Uh, we'll try one more time here on easy. All right, guys, here we go. Final try on easy. Again, it looks pretty equal to me. I don't know how this doesn't go through. Trade is still rejected. So that means in-game EA feels that Boston's winning this trade as they don't think Boston's giving up enough here. Um, I'm thinking Donato and a third round pick probably gets this to go through on easy. And no, it's still rejected. We're saving side to resign pending free agents. That's interesting. All right, guys, this is actually hilarious. I just offered Minnesota Ryan Donato and two first round picks for Charlie Coyle just to try and get the trade to go through. Look at the lines. Uh, see Coyle in a Boston Bruins jersey. And they're saying trade rejected, uh, saving side to resign pending free agents. But getting Donato, he's like a pending RFA, so they'd be saving $3 million. It makes no sense. I have no idea what's going on. Um, hopefully, I can get this trade to go through, but I think that seems like some sort of glitch or something. And now I guess I'm offering Minnesota two first round picks and some random AHL player, and they're saying yes to this trade. So they just got a worse trade. I don't understand. So, right here, guys, your first look at Charlie Coyle in a Boston Bruins jersey. Obviously, it looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's from Massachusetts. I forgot to mention he actually played for Boston University as well. So like I said, they lost one local kid in Donato, but uh, got a new one here in Coyle. Uh, again, yeah, I think the uh, Bruins black and yellow, they look pretty good. I'll also show you guys what I think the lines might look like uh, when the Bruins are healthy. Obviously, no change here to the defense, but I'll show you guys the forward group. Honestly, I think it looks pretty solid, and if they actually even make another addition here before the deadline's up, they're going to be very dangerous. So not going to make a change to that first line on the best in the league. Um, EA has Coyle playing on the second line right wing here, which I probably agree with uh, with Krejci and DeBrus just kind of fill up that second line a bit better. Uh, third line still not bad, Heinen, Backus, and Bjork. And then fourth line there, you got Corrali, Smith, and Nordstrom. So pretty good looking forward group there. Good amount of depth, obviously. Uh, their D is pretty solid. They got Rask and Nets. Should be a pretty scary team in the playoffs. Probably going to see another Maple Leafs Bruins first round matchup again this year, which should be fun as always. Uh, so next year we're actually going to try the trade from Minnesota's perspective and see what Boston says. So I'm going to try to trade from Minnesota's perspective. Um, as you can see there, Boston does have interest in Charlie Coyle. Also, their fifth round pick there is on the block. Forgot to mention the first time we did the trade, uh, Minnesota, for whatever reason, didn't have interest in Donato. And uh, Charlie Coyle, of course, wasn't on the block, as in this game, Minnesota's a contender. Probably not going to trade away like a top six, top nine guy. Um, you also might notice, too, the fifth round pick here is a 2020. Uh, for some reason, in game, uh, Boston does not have their 2019 uh, fifth round draft pick. Chicago has it, but... Clearly, they should have had it as they just traded it away. I looked on Cat Friendly too, and I can't think why Chicago has it. So if anyone knows why they would have it in real life, not in game, let me know. But uh, we have the trade difficulties here on hard. Looks to be, again, pretty even. Maybe even on our side, I guess. They want Coral. Let's see what they say. Trade rejected. Let's try medium. All right, guys. So now try this trade on medium difficulty. I think it might go through. And there we go. Trade is accepted. So again... I uh, was telling us that in-game EA thinks Boston got the better trade as Boston actually accepted this here on medium and beforehand Minnesota would not probably try the coil uh, no matter what. We offered them what was that? Donato and three first round picks and they're playing hardball saying how they have to save money to resign guys even though they were saving money uh, made absolutely no sense. So uh, we'll go take a look here and see what Donato looks like in a Minnesota Wild jersey. You'll also see how that affects the Minnesota Wild line. So right here guys you can see Ryan Donato in a Minnesota Wild jersey. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure if that's actually like his game face or not, or if it's just like a default one. Uh, it's pretty hard to tell, which tells me it might not be. Uh, Cole, you could tell, was actually Coil, and obviously all the big name guys, you can always tell, but Donato, I'm not sure. They might just did the best they could with like the kind of pre-sets they already have. Um, two, actually, after trading Coil, Minnesota is still considered a contender, which is kind of surprising. Um, so I'll show you guys the lineup. Um, again, I feel like Minnesota's good, but they just definitely need to like add a superstar forward, I think. Or something, you know, just to make their team less mediocre. So, uh, Zucker, Stahl, and Granlin there on the top line. This is assuming they're all healthy. Really just what I think the lines could be. Uh, Kunin, Koivu, and Parise on the second. Obviously, is having a huge resurgence here. Uh, Greenway, Rask, and Eric Sinek. So, uh, again, both those guys I met, which is kind of cool. Um, Aberg, Donato, and Felino on the fourth line. I'm guessing trade for Donato. They're probably going to play him higher up in the, in the lineup than fourth line. Try and get him going. Maybe even just have him play in the AHL, tear it up there. Who knows? Um, obviously, no changes to defense or goaltending. Will this team sweep in the playoffs? Maybe. The West is just so crazy right now. Like, like St. Louis is, what, 12-1-3 or something in the last 16 games? Absolutely ridiculous. I think they went, like, three straight games with a shutout. Went from last in the league to third in the Central in a month and a half, I'm pretty sure. That's just unheard of. Obviously, Colorado started sucking, dropped out of a playoff spot. Now, I think they have the second wild card, and Minnesota might be, like, the first fighting for that wild card spot. Chicago has a chance. 
Anaheim completely played themselves out of it. You never know what's going to happen in the West. So it should be pretty interesting to see what happens here in the next you know, few days. Who's buyers, who's sellers. Really want to see where uh, Panarin goes, if anywhere. Same with Bob. I think Bob's almost for sure staying. Panarin, though, may leave. Uh, Duchesne and Stone. I feel Duchesne's for sure going. Stone probably going. Same with the Zingle. Um, then you kind of got like lesser guys. There's still pretty big names any other trade day, like Simmons, Zuccarello, Hayes, Nightfist. Um, it should be a lot of fun. I'll definitely make trade videos for all the big name guys. I'm thinking like 84 overall plus, unless they're a huge prospect, like say Pugliarvi gets traded or Timothy Lundgren. Um, as otherwise, I'd just be making too many of these videos. So stay tuned for that, guys. Trade deadline is going to be a ton of fun. Also, should have some more videos out for you uh, this weekend. Other than that, thank you guys as always for watching this one. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.